Hello everyone and welcome to beautiful Dubai. I'm Maurice Ashley and I'll be your host for 14 exciting games of the FIDE World Championship Dubai 2021 where world champion Magnus Carlsen will take on challenger Jan Nepomnici. Um, the world championship is, um, is unique in the, in the sense that there's only one result. At least for me it's hard to feel what's going to happen. I'm not a prophet. The chess world is buzzing with excitement for this epic match as both players have their legions of fans. I hope that this is one of the most exciting world chess championship matches of all time. So I hope for fighting chess, fighting games. It would be nice if someone new would win because then everything changes. Well, of course I will root for Jan. Magnus is a favorite, but the match is very unclear. Though Magnus has been champion since 2013 and many are predicting him to win, his challenger has been a difficult opponent for him and even leads their lifetime matchup by a score of 4-1. to one. This is not, you know, the match where you can easily uh, predict the result. It's going to be a tough uh, race. But OK, Jan, he has his chance and uh, David can beat the Goliath. You never know. I would say uh, that Jan's greatest strength is, is just tactics, optimism is both sometimes his biggest strength and his biggest weakness. Well, I guess everyone has uh, his own weaknesses and Magnus is surely not an exclusion. After months of intense preparation, it's time for these two great gladiators to take center stage with history on the line in what should prove to be a match for the ages. The Chess Championship is the most prestigious and long-awaited event on the chess calendar. First held in 1886, there have been only 16 universally recognized champions, with Emmanuel Lasko of Germany holding the title for a record 27 years. The American Bobby Fischer defeated the Soviet Boris Spassky in 1972 to give the U.S. its only champion, while arch-rivals Garry Kasparov and Anatoly Karpov played a record five matches in 144 games over six years before Kasparov finally relegated his adversary into the shadows of history. Now held every two years, the championship has rested in the hands of Magnus Carlsen since 2013, as the brilliant Norwegian has proven time and time again that he is a dominant force not easily overcome. I will just today ask a question who I consider the best ever world champion of all times, and I think it's Magnus Carlsen. Es un genio. Para mí Magnus es un genio. Because he creates magic on the chessboard. He's a sportsman uh, that um, uh, is comparable uh, to the best uh, sportsman in other kinds of uh, sports, whether it's uh, like now Messi and Ronaldo in uh, football. Um, uh, my times it was uh, uh, still Michael Jordan and Ma Magic Johnson in basketball, so Magnus is like that already. To earn the right to do battle against the champion, Jan Nepomnici had to march through the brutal process of qualifying for and then winning the very difficult candidates tournament. Many believe he might be the ideal challenger who has what it takes to dethrone Magnus. Nepo uh, is, um, I think, a chess artist. Uh, I, uh, I see him as, um, as an artist uh, who is uh, playing to the pleasure uh, of others, but having uh, a huge personal ambition to become the champion. Yeah, he has self-belief and he has the strength to beat Magnus if Magnus is playing less than his best. He prefers the tactic. He plays fast, very fast. It's very uncomfortable to play against him, believe me. <laughs> if Jan gets initiative from the opening, he's extremely strong. As the number one ranked player for almost 12 years, Magnus seems favored to retain his title, but he has a losing lifetime record against his opponent, and there are those who wonder if an upset is in the making. On the one hand, uh, almost everyone likes Magnus, 
Titans. He's a great chess hero already. And on the other hand, sometimes people want a kind of a conflict and want uh, another guy to become um, uh, a champion. Uh, so I think the world is split now. Uh, and uh, my heart is split, I would say, uh, as well. I mean, I, I think Nepo has a really good chances and I don't know, I'll be rooting for him, actually. <laughs> He is a very strong, dynamic tactician. And that is maybe something for Carlsen which is not convenient because by style they are very different. Jan is exactly the player who can create the chaos in the game, on the board. So that will be a very interesting match. I, I, I'm sure Jan will take it seriously and he will do his best preparation. So we are waiting for a very interesting match in Dubai. It is time where the beginning of chess history release will be made. He is the challenger from Russia, Jan Nepomnesti. The world champion from Norway, Magnus Carlsen. Champion Magnus Carlsen uh, with the black pieces in the first round. Ian Nipomniac with the white pieces in the first round. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. As, as we've seen, Jan will have white, Magnus will have black. The games will begin in two days. to welcome the players who will be participating in this event. The challenger from Russia, Jan Nepomnesti. The champion from Norway, Magnus Carlsen. Magnus has been champion since 2013. This is his fourth title defense and many expect this to be one of the most interesting, to be sure. I will invite to the stage the president of FIDE, Arkady Dvorkovich, and he will be joined by His Highness Sheikh Sultan bin Khalifa al Nihan. Let the game begin. And the first move of this world championship has been played. These players have been waiting to do battle for months. And now Magnus has responded with his pawn to e5. This is a classic way to play, indeed, one of the most popular responses. And now knight to f3, attacking the pawn in the center of the board. Magnus quickly playing knight to c6, guarding his pawn. And now the popular choice is bishop to b5, playing the Roy Lopez as it's called, and Nepo must have prepared this intensely just for this battle. We're now at move eight, and Nepo is probably still in his preparation. What does he have planned against Magnus? And he's played the pawn to h3. This is indeed a KG move. Must be in his preparation still. And this is the kind of move Magnus is going to have to think about. Magnus studying the position, but in his mind, trying to work out what should be done here, as it seems as though this move has really caught him unawares. He seems frozen in thought, and you could see it on his face, the consternation, potential confusion about what his opponent has prepared, and Nepo gets up and walks away from the board. And there is Magnus looking off into space, trying to figure out what he should do right at this moment after that last move. And what choice will he do? It seems he's played knight to a5. That gives away a pawn. 
in the middle of the board. This seems very confusing indeed. Magnus has sacrificed a pawn on e5. Nepo has been studying this pawn. You know he wants to capture it. It looks like a free pawn in the middle of the board, but he knows Magnus must have something planned. So it is indeed a dangerous moment to walk into the world champion's preparation. But there he goes. He has captured the pawn on e5. The challenger is now ahead by a pawn in this game. The long-awaited candidates tournament meant to decide the challenger to world champion Magnus Carlsen took place in Yekaterinburg, Russia in March of 2020, when eight of the best chess players in the world descended on the city to begin their quest for the game's highest title. The favorites on paper were world number two, Fabiano Caruana, who had barely missed taking the crown from Magnus in 2018, and world number three, Ding Lorin, who had defeated Magnus in a tournament the previous summer but any of the other top grandmasters were capable of pulling off a big upset in a 14-round event full of intense pressure and incredible stakes riding on every single move. With sporting events shutting down worldwide because of the emergence and uncertainty of a dangerous new virus called COVID-19, the International Chess Federation's decision to go ahead with the tournament caused major controversy as qualifier Timur Rajabov pulled out in protest, prompting a last-minute replacement by French number one, Maxime Vachier-Lagrave. With no fans in attendance and health and safety protocols creating an unusual atmosphere for the players, it was the Russian Jan Nepomnichi who broke out the gate quickly with wins in rounds one, five, and six only to be dealt a stunning blow when he was soundly defeated by Vashil Agrav in round seven, leaving the pair in a tie for first at the halfway point of the event. The excitement was rising for the upcoming second half when the government of Russia suddenly decided it would close its borders due to coronavirus concerns, forcing the International Chess Federation to make the unprecedented decision of halting the tournament until further notice. The players would have to sit and wait an entire year until March of 2021 before the tournament would reconvene with the eight hungry competitors eager to cross swords once again for a shot at history and the two million euro purse. Co-leader Vashil Agrav saw his chances immediately take a dive when he was outplayed in round eight by Caruana and that allowed his main rival Jan Nepomnici to take the bull by the horns with big wins in round 10 over fellow Russian Kirill Alexenko and in round 12 against the Chinese player Wang Hao. Nepo's dominant performance was enough to clinch the event with a full round to spare, giving the Russian star his country's next hope of regaining the world championship title for the first time since 2007. What does it feel like to be here during this exciting game one? Well, Dubai is the city of gold and what can be more golden than the world championship match? And this is a clash that we've all been waiting for. So I'm super excited. I think it's a clash of styles between these two great players, Magnus and Jan. Uh, just love it, love the atmosphere, love the matchup. This is gonna be a big one. I actually think that the extra year that we had to wait for this match did noticeably change my desire to be here. I mean, just getting on a couple of long plane flights was kind of new and seeing a lot of friends, all my Norwegian journalist friends that have been, you know, waiting to interview me for an extra year. That's always very flattering. So uh, I'm pretty pumped. It's got a few restrictions because of COVID and everything. But overall, it just feels like a long anticipated world championship. I am so excited to be here for the entire World Chess Championship. A, I've never been to Dubai. B, I'm completely surprised just by the sheer number of like luxury buildings, everything that's going on in this entire country. It is uh, Expo 2020. It's the exposition of the innovation technology, all the achievements of the human mankind. And I think that chess very well fits here to have the two brightest 
two strongest, two smartest persons in the world here in the, the Expo 2020, fighting for the crown of the world championship, uh, chess champion, ch champions um, uh, uh, position. That's just amazing. Magnus has been down a pawn for some time, but it seems as if he's definitely brought himself back into this game with some great moves, some cagey moves, and he has to make a big decision about how to proceed in this exact moment. And it seems as though he's reached for the knight and he's captured the knight on F3 with his bishop, giving away a magnificent bishop, but smashing his opponent's pawn structure. And this is a big time decision by Magnus as it's going to change the game forever. That bishop is in the heart of his position. Nepo is going to have to capture this piece, no question about it, and there it goes. He's taking the bishop, and Magnus instantly captures the bishop on f4, continuing this trading policy, and there goes Nepo grabbing the bishop back on f4. Equal trades to be sure, but it looks as though the position has gotten much better for Magnus over those last couple of moves. Magnus has slowly taken over the initiative in this game. White has a terrible piece on G2. That knight is just defensive, and Magnus might be thinking that he has the advantage now and can play for the win, and he has played his pawn to B4, a very aggressive advance, certainly showing his intentions that he is very confident that now it's his turn to go on the attack. Magnus has continued to improve his position Certainly all the chances seem to lie with black and Magnus has captured the pawn on C3 with check, definitely an expected move. And it looks as though white will have to give back a pawn. That advantage that Nepo had has simply disappeared. Jan coming back to the board, seeing now that his king is in check, Magnus capturing that pawn on C3. It looks as though Nepo will have to capture back with his pawn, and he has done so. And Magnus, without much thought, has grabbed the pawn on B3, and he has equalized the number of pawns in the game. He is all the way back now, and it's Magnus who's playing for the win. Who do you think is going to win this game? You know, I have to say that game one hasn't disappointed. It's all about getting into the rhythm, just sort of taking care of your nerves. But here we have Magnus sacrificing a pawn for the initiative with the black pieces early on. I think it's a game for three results, but I'm predicting a draw. Well, first of all, I'm flattered uh, that you are asking me who I think is going to win this game when everybody's watching a supercomputer. Um, I don't have any particular insight they don't have, but I would say it's more of a fighting game than I expected for game one. I mean, a martial gambit by its nature is a fighting game. Uh, I still think they're pretty close to the margin of error where unless somebody really goes off the rails, it's going to be a draw in game one. It was an interesting beginning to the game. Magnus sacrificed a pawn and he went for a lot of activity. And Jan upon Mishi kind of has been able to tie things up and then turn into a more drawist position. But, you know, you never know what's going to happen because, you know, that's the nature of the game chess. You know, it's not over until that king is trapped. So I'm looking forward to uh, who knows what can happen. This has been an epic battle. Nepo has certainly defended with tenacity and now he's attacking Magnus's rook with his knight on e5. And that rook doesn't have many places to go. It looks as though this position is a difficult one for Magnus to maintain any advantage whatsoever. Magnus doesn't look as though he has much of a choice his rook has to move and it has to stay on that rank. And there he is playing the rook over to d6. And Nepo going back and attacking the rook. This looks like it will be a repetition as he is attacking the rook, forcing it back to the c6 square. And all Nepo has to do now is play the move knight to e5. And this position will repeat itself. There will be nothing that Magnus can do. What a great comeback by the challenger to have the chance to play this move. Knight to e5, attacking the rook yet again. And Magnus really has no choice. He's played his rook back to d6, and they have repeated moves. And this repetition means that the game will end in a draw. We should expect to see the arbiter 
come over at any moment. We see a handshake there, and a draw has been agreed. The first game of the World Chess Championship has ended in a draw. The two champs are tied at a half a point each going into the next day. Well, actually, I uh, was very slightly optimistic, uh, uh, you know, during the, <laughs> the whole game, let's say, because, um, I mean, this is quite a curious line from Black, yeah, and uh, that's very, very fine compensation. Uh, despite basically the pawn down in the end game, it's very hard to prove something with white, so I knew that, but uh, I thought, like, okay, maybe I can slowly build up something in the center, but uh, yeah, I guess logically, you know, this bishop f4 idea is logical just to trade away a pair of bishops. Uh, but uh, it doesn't work due to some, uh, uh, also as well, positional and tactical reasons. Uh, so basically after I let these exchanges happen, uh, it was never never something uh, I could really hope for. Yeah, more than a draw and then, okay, after. Uh, basically after b4, well, probably I have to bring my king to c2 and uh, accept, uh, you know, sacrifice the pawn back and, okay, just Except the draw. Magnus, the same question for you. When were you the most optimistic during this game? I wouldn't say I was ever particularly optimistic uh, in sense, um, you know, in the sense of winning, winning the game. Uh, I was a little bit worried, um, kind of uh, ec echoing Jan's sentiment of being a little bit optimistic. Um, but. Uh, yeah, I was, was happy uh, to find this idea with, uh, with B4, but I, I knew that if he um, remained prudent there and just brought his king over, I, I thought chances of winning the game were not, not realistic. Well, uh, I can't say much, so I was white, and normally we white, you want to, you want to try to win, but yeah, draw is also somewhat a result, but yeah, just was a... I guess a fine game from Magnus, so I don't feel, feel something specific. Yeah, the result was was solid. Um, I do feel that I was a little bit bit shaky at at times. Uh, there's certainly things that I, I could have done better, but overall, I think the result was fair enough. Yeah, I think Jan was already quite a lot more more solid in in the candidates, um, and. Uh, this, I guess, was a continuation uh, of, of that, but yeah, overall, he's just a very good player. I mean, I didn't particularly mind um, the, um, the position that I got. Uh, I mean, the opening that I, I played is not one you can, you can afford to, uh, to play if you're not fine being down a pawn with the, with the bishop pair. Um, but a after that, it does, in general, feel like um, why there's a little bit more more potential to um, uh, to maneuver, and Black usually has to has to react a bit more. Uh, but I was pretty happy with the plan that I, I found. Eventually, um, giving up the bishop pair um, to some extent looks very counterintuitive, but I thought that uh, I would still have have reasonable compensation with uh, um, with his weakened pawn structure and relatively passive pieces and at least in the game I was at least half vindicated. Game two will be tomorrow at 1630 at the Dubai Exhibition Center. Thank you very much. Have a great night.